find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, episode 78. I'm pretty sure it's 78 this time. I think I screwed it up last week. Mike Sorg here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. A little bit of a video producer with some local groups here in the area with Sorgatron Media and PittsburghWrestling.com. So a little bit in the business and uh, wanted to share the love of indie wrestling. Also here to share the love is the lovely Eamon Payton from Inspire Pro Wrestling, the commentator down there currently in Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh, 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 I am yeah, lovely. All right, we're back. Wrong knob. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. No, uh, I, I thank you for the adjective. I appreciate it. Very, I am very lovely. It's my word of the day. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, like I said, this is a show we talk indie wrestling. You check out this and so much more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We try to cover as many aspects of pro wrestling as we can and uh, and talk with people that we come across in the in the industry. And, 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 and again, I'll give you guys a reason to check out more stuff if you're into indie wrestling, if you're exploring indie wrestling, and uh, see who's up and coming in, in these days. Uh, so uh, like I said, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Find links for subscribing to this and other shows on iTunes iTunes, Spreaker, uh, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, Daily Motion, all kinds of places you can find us. And follow us on the social media, Instagram, Wrestling Mayhem Show, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and just search it. We're probably around there. If we're not, let us know. And you can let us know at goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. And please, uh, hey, shout outs to our friend Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for the intro and outro music for this and uh, the main Wrestling Mayhem Show as well. And uh, with that, also please support us on Patreon if you're digging us. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, get and, and, and you'll get some cool stuff out of that as well. So let's get into it. I'm very excited to talk to tonight's guest. Eamon, who do we got? We got someone from uh, my neck of the woods this week. It was, it was my turn to take the reins. And uh, this is someone I definitely have been wanting to have on for a good while. Uh, uh, someone who you may have heard not just here in the state of Texas, but elsewhere as well. Uh, she is a uh, former NWA World Women's Champion. She's also uh, done uh, numerous amount of things for uh various companies in texas but you may have also seen her in wsu uh and and many other places uh joining us this week is the one and only barbie hayden barbie how are you this evening i am so good i'm much on a rice cake <laughs> <laughs> awesome I'm, like i said very glad to have you uh, uh on the show thank this you week. um i guess to sort of uh start things off and and, and break the ice in the sense because uh, uh everyone i guess that we've had on the show gets into wrestling for one reason or the other uh the question i uh, we tend to ask is uh, what's your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling um i okay so i wasn't allowed to watch wrestling um as a kid um i'm only 24 now so for me growing up it was the attitude era which mm. i mean for most people they'd probably be like why were you not watching um <laughs> but yeah it was just a little too rough for my mom's liking so um, I didn't actually start watching wrestling until I was about 16 or 17 years old. And the reason I, I even got into wrestling, even watching it, was my uh, boyfriend, uh, Houston Carson, who also uh, wrestled, for those who don't know. Um, and he put it on, and I was just, like, mesmerized. I was like, oh, my God, that was so cool. And my first, like, real, real, like, big memory is that he took me to a um, – a live event and I saw Mickey James up in the ring for the first time. And I was just in love with her still to this day. She is such an inspiration to me. And so, um, that was my first true memory was, uh, you know, going with, with Houston to that show and seeing Mickey James and just being like, Oh my God, she is like God's gift earth. I need to be just like her. <laughs> awesome. Definitely. Uh, and your transition, I guess, from sort of, uh, uh, training to become a wrestler. Do you have any, did you have any sort of an athletic background before that? So uh, was it kind of a, a a natural transition in that sense? Um, you know, honestly, it was. I've always wanted to continue doing athletic things in my life. Um, I was a softball catcher for 11 years, um, played on a lot of tournament teams and things like that. Um, I also was in dance and I uh, had several years of that. And then once I actually got into high school, became the captain of my dance team uh, for a couple of years. 
over at Symbol Texas, go Wildcats. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, I mean, those were my primary things. Of course, I, I, you know, played a couple of little sports or whatever, you know, here and there. But no, it was definitely all about softball and all about band. Definitely awesome. Uh, going into sort of uh, uh, your start in wrestling, if I if I have it right, you trained uh, originally in Austin under uh, uh, George Zayla Isla. Uh, uh, yes. What was it like? What was it like to sort of uh, uh, get in the ring and start training? Did you did you expect it to be uh, uh, the way it was? I guess. Oh my god! No, it was horrible. <laughs> it was like the hardest thing physically, the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. I show up, and I mean, it's like the middle of summer. I literally started training three days after I graduated high school. So I walk into this abandoned theater where all the seats are pretty much gone and it's concrete floor um there's no windows no ac just one tiny door on like the top part of the slope and i walk in and you know it's nothing but guys not a girl in sight and i was like oh god what have i got myself into and that's actually how it continued the almost the entire year and a half that i trained there um i would drive from call station to austin three days a week which was a two-hour drive there two yeah. hours back. So three times a week for a year and a half was pretty tough. Um, but there, the training itself was just so much harder than I thought it was going to be. And on top of that, being in Texas heat inside of a building yeah. with no ventilation is, is like excruciating. And I mean, like I couldn't hardly eat my food, like chew it because my jaw was so sore. And like when I would go to wash my hair in the shower, literally my head would just fall backwards like a bobblehead. <laughs> because my neck and my shoulders, my back were just like on fire constantly. But, um, but like, there's also no greater like satisfaction than whenever I went through my gauntlet. It was like a one hour gauntlet of people coming in fresh, you know, every few minutes and wrestling with me. And after I was done with that, I was just like, oh. <laughs> you know, on top of the world, it felt amazing. So. Awesome, and then yeah. from the way it sounds, you predominantly trained with uh, uh, male competitors. From uh, from the, from the way it sounds, did you find that part kind of uh, interesting in the sense that do you? I mean, uh, in the fact that you know working with a male as opposed to a female. You know, it was one of the things where I went in not knowing any different. So, like that, I think helped a little bit. And also, I have been such like I I feel like I'm equal part girly girl, equal part tomboy. Um, mm. Me and my brother and my dad were super close. And then my two sisters and my mom are super close. Um, and so, you know, cause like we were the two youngest, they were the two oldest. So we kind of split off. And so I, I was kind of used to, you know, being around boys a lot. And a lot of my best friends are guys. Um, so like that aspect of it wasn't too bad, but the physicality of it was just like brutal because they could just throw me around. Like I was air. So, yeah, that was pretty rough. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I also want to kind of mention because um, you and, and, and a lot of other people that I know uh, you closely associate with, I think one of the bigger strengths of you particularly is not just the in-ring work, but the uh, the professionalism in a sense, like the work the work that you do outside of the ring, like in – uh, in your presentation and, in, 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 you know, in, in that kind of aspect. Um, was there someone, I guess, was that something you learned in, in, in your time early in wrestling school or was that something, is that something you kind of learned over time in a sense? Um, I would say kind of both. Um, you know, typically speaking, by the way, that was like the, my biggest fear was like if a microphone even got within like a hundred yards of me, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm mm -hmm. going to combust right now. Like this is the end of my life. Um, and almost every Saturday they would have a promo class where we would have to get in the ring, everyone watching, and they would just be like, okay, you're going to go against this person at this place at this time. Give us a promo. You've got 60 seconds. Go. And you know what I mean? Like it was brutal, but the good thing is, is that it really helped me to kind of, work on my, you know, work on my toes and stuff and, and everything. But it was cool too. Cause like later on, um, you know, in wrestling, you run into like, Oh my God, just some of the most amazing and inspiring people. It's like ridiculous. And, um, one person that Houston and I actually had the privilege of working with pretty early on was, uh, Jake St. Robert. Oh, really? And yes. And he helped us, I mean, just tremendously, um, with, you know, microphone skills and presentation and how to just 
you know, really, really entertain people um, with everything, like making every little thing count, not just, you know, going through the motions. And so Mm -hmm. that helped out a lot for sure. Definitely. And I also think uh, you in particular, and and Carson's another one I think of as well, when I uh, think of people, we kind of discussed a lot on the show about, you know, wrestlers, even on the indies, like building a brand for themselves, like marketing themselves in a sense. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Uh, do you think do you think that's been something that's that's kind of come easy to you as as well? Because it seems like whether it's your social media, whether it's uh, you know, I guess getting yourself out there in a sense, you seem to have a great understanding of of that kind of side of the business. Um, I really, you know, like I, I've actually been pretty shy for most of my life. Um, but like a, I would say a month into me training when I first started training, um, my dad passed away. And it was unexpected, and it was just one of those things that, you know, I was so close to him, and he was so outgoing, and he was very much a, you know, get your name out there, have fun, meet everybody, you know, and it it kind of inspired me to do the same thing. I was like, you know, I never know when the last day will be, so I want to make sure that I get to as many places as I can as quickly as I can, you know, and just treat people the way I want to be treated is the biggest thing. Um, I feel like the social media aspect of it just kind of came along as I went. Um, but it was my easiest way of communicating with my fans. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of snowballed with, with that. So it's been just a big snowball effect, I think. (laughs) Very cool. Awesome. Uh, uh, another thing we want to talk about, uh, obviously uh, you, uh, being one of the more prominent faces now on the indies uh, in women's wrestling, uh, uh, obviously, well, yeah, um uh obviously we i mean this past uh yesterday on raw obviously there was a big thing with like you know women revolutionizing and and you know sort of a movement going on of women's wrestling uh and we've asked this to a couple of our uh, women's wrestling guests on the show but uh do you think there's more opportunities nowadays for for women do you notice uh, uh any certain uh big trends emerging in that case oh yeah absolutely i mean even if you take an ask into the aspect of of wwe specifically um, I mean, just think about how they're doing the NXT. Um, or I'm sorry, Tough Enough. I apologize. I know it used to be NXT, but um, mm-hmm. the way they're doing Tough Enough now, and it's you know men and women kind of going head to head. And I know that they did do that, you know, a while back and everything like that. But it was more or less, I feel, kind of a gimmick. But now you can really see these girls getting a big opportunity to open, you know, more doors and everything. And um, it's kind of like whenever, uh, like, AJ and, like, Caitlyn, uh, those girls broke through. Remember, they, they were kind of – it was kind of more or less silly. You know, it was more about, like, having fun in the ring. And, you know, no one really took it seriously as a competition, I feel. Um, I feel like that was what was the feedback from, you know, the all-girls, um, like, NXT thing that they did or whatever it was. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, I think it's, it's completely opened more doors. And, two, them having that show, Total Divas, um, that helps because people who have never seen wrestling before ever, they just know about pop culture. They now know about wrestling and want to watch it because, you know, they've seen it on different, you know, channels, not just, mm-hmm. you know, wrestling. So absolutely. Like so many doors have opened. It's crazy. Definitely. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, uh, you've, you've gotten into, uh, uh, gain a lot of opportunities in the wrestling world. Uh, uh, specifically, I know recently you, uh, just came back from a tour of Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. I know, uh, yeah. you've had, you've done a couple tours in Mexico. I know you've done, uh, I believe Canada as well. Uh, yeah. uh, what's it been like sort of, uh, uh, getting out there and traveling on the road and, and, and on, you know, pretty, pretty lengthy roads in, in those cases in a sense. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like it's so different every single trip. Like one trip is just like, Oh, flawless. Everything went great. This is so much fun. And then like, for instance, my last time I went, um, to Mexico, uh, uh, this past, I guess not this weekend, this past weekend, but the one before, Hmm. um, Oh my gosh, my passport is right now. I think I actually just got it in today, but my passport was over at the China embassy. Uh, I'm next thursday for a china tour it's two weeks long oh wow. and yeah i'm going with uh, mid-atlantic um wrestling so they needed us to send our passports over to get our visas obviously and which i thought was kind of weird but whatever um they did not send it back in time for me to go to mexico so even though i had a flight and everything booked i ended up having to drive from where i live down to the border and then down into monterey um, oh, and then i took a, a bus back up 
and, uh, you know, got my car at the border and then, you know, came back up. I was in the car Saturday, Sunday, Monday was, you know, the time frame that I was actually there. And I was in the car 23 hours by myself. I was just like, oh my God, this is brutal. But the actual, like the experience there that was just phenomenal. Um, I went through Clutch City Productions and uh, they were the ones who booked me there. And, um, it was so cool. I got to do like radio shows. Um, I got to do TV spots. Um, you know, it was just, it was, and I ended up wrestling actually on TV, um, with multimedia TV. So that was nice. That's a cool experience. Awesome. And, and it seems like you're definitely expanding in that sense and, and getting out there more, which is always really cool. Um, Thank you. No problem. Uh, do you have any, uh, uh, in that sense, do you have any particular goals for the, uh, for the future, uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, what you want to make, I guess, a sense out of this career? Um, you know, it, it's, I feel like it's been the same since day one. I have always, you know, fought for WWE. That's always been my, I mean, it was the only wrestling I knew and I fell in love with it. So it's still where I would love to end up. And in my mind, I absolutely will um, mm. because I, you know, everything I have set for myself goal-wise so far, I have accomplished. And so I don't see why that's any different. Definitely. And I, th- I think the, in, especially, like I said, like not just your wrestling also, but the way you market yourself and, and get yourself out there. It seems like that I, I wouldn't be surprised in seeing that at all. Um, oh, but, thank uh, you. <laughs> Yay. No problem. Uh, uh, going to sort of our, uh, our questions we ask uh, uh, more regularly on the show. Uh, yeah. Just in general, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, whether for uh, like in wrestling wise, whether for like studying purposes or uh, just recreation? Is there anything that you've been uh, keeping your eye on lately? Um, I mean, I really I have to go week by week as well. Um, of course, I always watch WWE. Um, I lost. I lost watching TNA, unfortunately. Um, but I also will catch our um, Ring of Honor. I will also catch uh, New Japan. You know, we record those and watch those. Um, but then also, you know, week to week, um, you know, whoever my opponents are coming up, I will, you know, find tapes on them, or I guess not tapes anymore, but um, <laughs> uh, like YouTube, you know, videos and stuff like that, and, you know, really try to study up on my opponents in particular, not just like a general broad you know, sense, I guess. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of the general way I do it is just kind of here and there, you know, if something, you know, sparks and I'm just like, Hey, this looks cool. You know, I'll watch it. So. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and then sort of our big question that we ask everyone, uh, and, and all of our guests tend to take it in many different directions. So, so feel free uh, uh, with yours, but, uh, uh, what is in your opinion, the best thing about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh man, um, the best thing, you know, I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, it's going to sound so selfish, I feel, um, but I mean, it's just the feeling that you get, um, it's undescribable how it feels when you walk through that curtain and out onto a stage and, you know, if you're good enough, people will react to you. And then once that reaction happens, it is just like you are so completely overwhelmed. It's, you can't describe how that feels. You know what I mean? It's just because mm-hmm. you work so hard. There are so many things that people do not see that you have to go through. And you are told no so many times over and over and over. And you get hurt and, you you know, you get, bar- you know, bumped and bruised and, um, you know, there's just so much stress that goes into it. And so the reward of going through and people actually appreciating what you've gone through and appreciating what you're bringing to the table for them is just so freaking awesome. It's like ridiculous. Um, and now to drag that down into the gutter, um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should have started with a bad thing and then ended it like on a good note. Oh no. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, Hey, we're going to take it high and then I'm going to like drag it to hell. If that's cool. But <laughs> I I absolutely love my family and I absolutely love Houston and I mean like they they literally are my entire world um and my cats as well <laughs> but that that to me is the hardest part is missing out on birthdays missing out on birth uh, missing out on holidays um, I miss my cats constantly because they are not Mr Money they cannot travel with me 
um, <laughs> they freak out if I even put them like on their leashes and try to take them outside for five seconds. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's times when me and Houston are both across the country in different places or, you know, we don't get to travel together and then I can't tell my cat, oh, hey, I'm going to leave for two weeks. Um, I didn't die, but I, I will be back. You know, it's like they don't understand stuff like that. And your family doesn't understand when you're like, yeah, I know it's Christmas, but this flight was, you know, now and I'll be gone for like a week and I won't see any of you. Um, you know, so it's, that's definitely the hardest part. I feel like that's probably what most people's answer is anyway, because mm-hmm. it's really tough missing out on your like loved ones, you know, events, everything. Definitely. I, I definitely yeah. see that. Um, well, thank you very much, for, uh, Barbie, for joining us uh, on the show this week. Uh, if you have any, yeah. uh, no problem. Uh, if you have any upcoming yeah. events uh, that you'll be appearing at, or any, uh, if people want to follow you on social media, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. Um, well, I know that the the match that I just had in Mexico was posted on YouTube. So um, I feel like if you maybe type in Barbie Hayden versus Estrellita, uh, she works for CMLL and AAA. Um, that's an, an amazing tag match. It also features WWE Carlito. Um, and, you know, just look me up on YouTube, look me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like you mentioned before, I'm an open book. So if you want to, you know, get in contact with me, feel free. I'm on there all the time. and I will write back. Um, I definitely appreciate the love. Everything is Barbie Hayden. So if you just search on any of those, B-A-R-B-I-H-A-Y-D-E-N. So that's Barbie Hayden no fancy stuff added, um, you will find me. And, yeah, so, um, again, I'm leaving for China next week, so I'm going to try to figure out my phone situation. That way I can keep in contact with everybody, but I will be back um, <laughs> August 3rd. And then after that, I will be facing Kimberly at Inspire Pro uh, on August 12th, I believe. Uh, August 9th. 9th, okay. I have said 12th, like, probably 900 times. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> So just kidding. Don't go on like a Wednesday um, <laughs> on August 9th. And then after that, I will be at Lone Star Championship Wrestling in Texas. Um, I will be facing uh, Kenzie Sykes. She was formerly with uh, Reality of Wrestling, Booker T's company. So, yeah, that's what I that's what I have coming up. And, so yeah, thank you guys again very much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, and, and anyone listening, I would definitely encourage uh – to check out Barbie Hayden if she's in your area uh, because you will definitely be uh, entertained. Uh, so yeah. once again, oh, once again. oh one, one more cheap plug. Um, Absolutely. I do have new shirts. I know that that was a big thing for a lot of people. They were wondering where to get my new shirts. They have a gigantic cat on them, of course, because I'm a crazy <laughs> cat lady. And it says always winning because me and my fans are always winning. And you can get them at strongstylebrand.com. Awesome. And we've actually uh, had the guys from uh, Strong Style on before, so uh, definitely uh, cool to have you on as well. Uh, A little little crossover there. Uh, But, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, And we're going to take a dive into all that's been happening this week uh, in Super Rich on Media. It was up on Crossy Road. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh, that's Uh, sad and disheartening. But you can – I mean, you can only cross so many roads, Bobby. It's retrofitted with giant paintball guns, like Gatling paintball guns. And, uh, and it looks freaking serious. It actually takes two people to op- operate. There's actually an operator and a gunner in this thing. It's ridiculous. So, and there's some shots there of it just destroying cars with paintballs. Wow. Amazing. He gave me one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have in my entire career. No matter what I've done before or what I will do. Uh, that night, Chuck handed me the IWC title, the old title, the custom-made International Wrestling Cartel Heavyweight title. And, I'm, and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at it. I have it in a glass case on my wall. It's not a lot of times in independent wrestling that you get to keep something that you worked very hard for, okay? Like can't snarky. say don't be, don't be, a, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be, be a, snarky. Don't be a smart no, ass. Don't be, like, a, don't be a smart ass. Don't be, yeah, that's smart it. Smart ass, Sorg, did you just come up with that? Yeah, I don't think I've heard of it. He's mother f***ing awesome. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Program in Pittsburgh, August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium, or join us live 
ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference to and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! Yeah! Please check out everything going on at SogatronMedia.com, AwesomeCast, InsertCoinToBegin.com's Boss Battle, and of course the regular Wrestling Mayhem show, and a, and a few more things may be happening there. Sawtooth Willie, for instance, uh, in, the, in Pittsburgh. So, uh, I left Pittsburgh. Actually, I had a very interesting weekend. First of all was AIW's Absolution 10. We'll get into that in a second. Second of all, uh, Saturday night I went to WWE's live event in Pittsburgh, which was headlined by John Cena and Kevin Owens. Okay, that was cool too. And then finally, VOW's uh, July Justice uh, down in Collins, Collinsville, uh, down here south of Pittsburgh. So I had at three... At the Ice Mine. At the Ice Mine. Three days. That's my name for a venue. <laughs> three days of wrestling uh, that I did not have to work. <laughs> It was a hell of an experience. It was an awesome weekend. Uh, really needed that. Really cool to, 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 to have that go on. And again, like a lot of wrestling that uh, I didn't have to be involved in. I got to just witness, right? Uh, as much as I still ended up talking shop with somebody uh, as I'm watching AIW. Uh, <laughs> I can't turn it off. I definitely can't turn it off. But anyways, so so rolling back uh, to AIW. Easily, Eamon, I think this is the best indie show I've ever seen. Ooh, I'm excited. I, I I'm really excited think it is. And I'm I'm discounting uh, Ring of Honor. I'm discounting a lot of things. Um, but I haven't had I've haven't been on a show with this kind of energy in a long, 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 long time. And and and, and you know, uh, IWC used to have this, I think, to a certain point. And I, I don't think it. I think it's been lost over several years here. Um, but uh, just like the history and all the local guys and everything. And uh, understandably, AIW. This is their big thing. This is the tenure. All the stops were pulled out on this. So, of mm-hmm. course. And it was, you know, with its usual indie problems. It started an hour late. The room was hot. Ridiculous. They were selling standing room only tickets for $20. And there wasn't really much room to stand. So, there's that. Uh, it, it, the show ran until 1230 at night. Jeez. With nine matches. Um, when we were sitting there, uh, the, the Global Force Wrestling show was happening in Erie. And we had some friends there. Uh, and, uh, while we were in the start of our fourth match, which was right before our first intermission or our intermission, I guess, uh, they were having their main event. I think wow. they started at seven thirty. So obviously a little more tighter, uh, uh, you know, running, uh, down there, but still in general. And, and as you'll see, if you see any pictures footage, it, it was really kind of, they were almost literally hanging mm. from the rafters here. There was a nice balcony. This is a, some kind of Masonic uh, a, a temple temple no that doesn't seem right a hall or something like that and uh mm-hmm. you know there was like a stage that they walked out on and everything uh and, and a few lights on there and, and it's really kind of tight right uh great great matches all night long was not i don't think there was a bad one i heard so they had the second match was veda scott and athena i heard like two guys behind me kind of bitching about the match and i'm like this is this is like like fantastic it was like i'm like are you kidding me you know I, and that's i feel like weird that's that's honestly an interesting uh point like it's like i i like obviously you and and uh i don't know if we mentioned but uh, uh our good friend debtors and uh wheels who we had on i uh, was mm-hmm. with you as well like i like that's that kind of style of wrestling i think I mean, style of show was probably like the first you really seen for the most part i think uh no, no, not that i've seen um but Definitely. At least live in a I sense. mean, I, I feel like a lot of the vibe that you got from this was like the kind of things that make Ring of Honor shows so great. Um, that mm-hmm. energy, you know, that building energy, right? And and just great hard hitting wrestling and just great performance, right? Uh, I've had conversations about like some some uh, big shows that we have in the area that that end in really weird ways, and I was like, I just want to see matches, you know? I don't care about the storylines. I just want to see matches. I showed up. You know, me as a person that doesn't sh- watch AIW on a regular story, basis, yeah. I got to show up, enjoy wrestling. It didn't matter if I know why Gregor Iron is with these guys. They had a killer match, and then Vader destroyed everybody afterwards, right? And to see guys that we've seen in IWC, like Alex Daniel that I mentioned mistakenly or accidentally earlier on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, or Joshua Singh. Joshua Singh is over as hell up there. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's awesome. And then to see him down in IWC and knowing, like, Dude, they love them up there. Do some, do something with this guy, right? Um, he's very talented and really good stuff. And seeing some people on their home turf, uh, for you know, Josh Clemens or Jake Clemens, 
Jeez. Uh, for instance, we always see down here in Pittsburgh. Uh, see him. Uh, see him back there. Pedro it was Pedro's last night doing anything wrestling. This is, uh, I think this is the place that started him, if I recall. And uh, it was uh, really cool to to see that. Right. And I'll get to right. some of that in a moment here. Uh, but generally, and they love them. They they love them up there, as you would imagine down here. Uh, like I said, Vader was part of the car. Came out early to squash the kind of thing. Uh, we had, uh, ah, geez, I don't even know where to go from this. Uh, okay. There, there's a couple points from the evening. Of course, we mentioned dudes on TV, uh, going into this, which is, was announced as probably the most incredible, uh, assembly of talent in one ring. We're talking about in one side of this. Ray Rowe representing Ring of Honor, Ethan Carter with the TNA Championship belt, Samoa Joe currently of WWE's NXT, uh, as well as Matt Cross from Lucha Underground, no, known as Son of Havoc there. Uh, just on one side, DJ Zima... Uh, uh, DJ Z, Zima Ion, Shima Zion, friend of the show as part of this. Um, so good seeing him up there as well. And on the other side, and this is the Team AIW. <laughs> Young Bucks, <laughs> Johnny Gargano, Alex Daniels, Josh Prohibition, which is a uh, name in Cleveland, and if you remember old Backyard Wrestling, he was in the video game, guys. He was. Uh, I mean, uh, that's like, like he's legit. And, uh, I mean, Matt Cross as well is that one, uh, in, yes. as that Dog 20. Right, right, exactly, exactly, from the old days. And then both these guys are uh, very involved, as well as Johnny Gargano with Prime Wrestling uh, that was involved with a few years uh, ago. They had just a tremendous thing going on there. Uh, it, they had a lot of fun with it. Ethan Carter came out and, and sold this big, like, I'm the, the Young Bucks are not going to make me suck it. Uh, Samoa <laughs> Joe comes out and seems just completely unimpressed with the dudes, and they are actually, like, they get in a circle and chant, dudes, 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 which... Just in my mind, Ray Rowe doing this is just kind of like weird. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the, exactly, right? And Joe's just kind of like shaking his head. And, 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 and the most amazing spot is the uh, uh, the human centipede spot that happened. Here's a little image if you're on video with us. Which was, um, they kind of got, every, I, I, you know, I was on the floor. I couldn't really see this very well. So it was a nice high angle from uh, up in the balcony. But uh it was a. Uh, they got everybody kind of like in a, a legs around your head kind of hold in a line, and then Samoa Joe came and turned everybody over into a Boston crab, basically. That's uh, amazing. So, yeah, just, you know, it was ridiculous things. That was fun. I saw a Mortal Kombat spot in the first match. <laughs> Have you seen this? Basically, a get over here scorpion thing, and the guy comes over to the invisible spike. That's pretty awesome. So very Shakara e kind of thing going on there. Um, uh, the other, I guess, uh, you said that you said the vine of this is doing absolutely insane, uh, right it, now. It's close to, it's, it's close to breaking 5 million. 5 million? Yes. Oh, geez. Well, they had a, a, a six man scramble with Lewis Linden, Flip Kendrick, uh, Cedric Alexander. I think ACH was a surprise. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, uh, he was replacing the injured uh, Chris Saban. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Chris Saban. That's right. Uh, and, and another local guy, I don't know the white guy. I keep forgetting who that is. Uh, uh, Tyler Thomas. He's actually, I believe, from Canada. He was uh, awesome. Dude, the, he was awesome. Yeah. Oh, so he's super white. Got it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and Cancel Ray, who, who does intergender, you know, all over the place. So this is nothing new. Uh, but it was interesting because they, they kind of played this whole thing up. And in the heat of it, Cedric Allen Alexander delivered the most devastating move ever and just made everybody pop and i know i know everybody around me and you know never saw like a girl take a move like that you know that that, that was with us right um mm -hmm. actually it's funny because i took my father-in-law to a pwx show when they first opened in that new building down there in mckeesport and uh there was a ladder match i think with chris taylor and strider probably involved in the a crystal i think her name was crystal frost at ringside and she took a pretty much a very similar move to that off the top of the ladder and and, and he mm. kept telling ask me after afterwards and every time it's brought up it's like i don't i don't i don't think she was okay after that i'm like oh she's fine <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, I'm sure she's fine you know i saw her show a couple months later she's great you know uh but uh it, it was it was very interesting and, and and to see that and now you were very interested in in our reaction to that right i, I was just honestly i was i was honestly curious in your reaction for the whole evening uh, mm. but, but for this in general, because uh, obviously intergender wrestling, I think, is a thing that's become a bit more prominent now on, on the indies, especially AIW, who their next event is a Battle of the Sexes show. Where right. It's all, right. It's all right. intergender. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I was definitely curious about your guys' thoughts. They, uh, but, they I mean, they, 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 they do it. They don't overdo it. Um, 
AIW definitely pushes the envelopes, and it feels like over the years, because I've watched some early stuff with some friends of the show on there, and it just looked like bloody stuff at bars. You know what I mean? And it just was not appealing. And it feels like they push the envelope, but they're not pushing it to a stupid level. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Things that make seem to make sense, at least in what I'm witnessing so far. Uh, so I think they, they got it in a really, really good spot. Um, so, so Dutters, this is, I think, her second indie show, not counting The Gathering last year. Uh, she joined us for Super Indie and was just basically hooked. She's like, "Whatever you need, I'll help you. What you know, please, I want to be part of this." Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, something along those lines. I don't know. I'm paraphrasing, but uh, it was actually her that was like, "Let's go to the show." She was just, she was down here in the studio, like, and gave me the flyer with Samoa Joe and Vader on it. And I'm like, "Okay," and she's like, "Are you free?" I'm like, "Yeah, I think I'm free." It's like, "Cool, you're going. Tickets gone." done i was like <laughs> okay we're doing this uh so so this is her thoughts as a whole awesome show i thought they made a uh, good use of their talent uh on the intergender match slight tangent i thought it was incredibly well done what makes me say that the fact that the crowd including myself weren't caught up in the hey there's a girl in the ring everyone in the ring went balls to the wall i love the ballplex city chance she does this uh under the crotch suplex thing uh, mm-hmm. and, and everybody chanting about Plex City. Uh, if it, it wasn't about being sexy or provocative. It was about technique and strength. I've also come with the conclusion that the crowd was the... Uh uh, the crowd has the power to ruin ladies' matches. When the Veda Scott Athena started, I heard several gentlemen in the crowd making derogatory comments, which right off the bat takes the legitimacy out of the match. Good point, good point. And, it, you know, it's a very rough crowd. Uh, it, it, admittedly, it's a very rough crowd. Uh, instead of watching two trained competitors, we're now watching two scantily clad ladies roll around a ring. I've learned what kind of immediate impact the crowd makes during an indie show match. I, I'm sure those, those girls would have kicked the crap out of any of those jerks, especially Athena. I, again, I thought it was a very good match. And, and, and to the point where like, I, I realized that what happens in a match with Veda Scott and Athena is it's a very crisp match, right? Versus... I, uh, I mean, there's good, there's some really good talented ladies here in this area, but, and, and, and I have this battle with some of the, some of my colleagues all the time of, oh, women's wrestling is, is whatever. Right. And, and because I don't think they're seeing the right combinations of talent because you'll have a good, yeah. you know, I mean, Mary Elizabeth Monroe, obviously very good. Um, uh, Serafini getting very good. You know, I, I haven't seen her uh, a lot recently. Okay, I saw her Saturday night, but not in a wrestling capacity. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but 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 we've seen, and I think this can be true of, I've seen this in every Fed that I've worked with, um, that one girl that doesn't look like they quite get it yet brings it down. And I think that hurts more than when a guy doesn't get it. Yeah. To be quite honest. And, and I think uh, up here, I think they have a lot of girls that get it in AIW. So when they're like kind of crapping on this match, one, it just came off of a Vader destroying people and a, a crazy uh, a, a, a four, eight man tag. I think it was, um, you know, I, I think, I think that kind of lent, landed to that. Um, what the hell have I ever sent you to my diva tangent? I'm excited to see if Sasha Banks and uh, Charlotte rumor is true. And I'm curious to see how that, how the crowd reacts. Okay. I actually think this was done before raw. So, Okay. Okay. If, if if you want to know, apparently it is true. Okay. There you go. Well, I, well, uh, I can assume. Indie wrestling as a whole observation. One of the biggest differences and one of my uh, uh, favorite things about Indie versus WWE and TNA is the lack of dependence on a storyline. When you ask someone to go to Raw for another show, maybe they may respond with, I haven't watched in a while and I won't know what's going on. You don't have to keep up with storylines on Indie, most likely because the wrestlers wrestle in different factions, I'm sure. Indie wrestling depends on which each wrestler brings to the ring at that moment. I, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I and I think... Okay, how am I going to say this? I think promoters need to remember that too, that they're not booking Raw. Yeah. I think promoters need to realize some of these people just showed up to watch wrestling and not for you to, you know, you have to do something to get them to that next show, but don't make the entire night about getting them to that next show for several reasons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it has to be okay. It was great to watch the progression of Keith Hodden and Dylan Bostic, but you didn't need to watch all three of the matches to enjoy one of the matches. And I think that's very, very important. I think fans, there are your diehard fans that they will appreciate the little things, but you need to make sure you're not forgetting about the flyby nights that show up to a super indie every year. And that's it. And when you have a thing that doesn't make sense, unless you watch the next three IWC shows, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think you've lost some people there. 
uh, or, or, you know, same, I, I've seen this in every Fed. You know, I, I'm not singling one out, uh, but this one that sticks out to me recently. So, uh, and, and again, AIW, I felt like I didn't need to come to the next show. Uh, and I'm not somebody who would come to the next show because I'm the person that that came drove three hours from Pittsburgh to see it, mm-hmm. and I will consider going to Absolution next year. I, I'll tell you that. Just like I consider, oh, am I free to go see King of King of uh, Trios again? Because I want to go see that. But I don't follow Chikara, and I got to drop in and watch a tremendous was it two three days of wrestling, whatever that was. Um, yeah. And I think you need to remember. Some people are there. I mean, some feds. It's it, you. It is the same people every month. But but you have to. You're never going to grow if you're not going to attract new people. And AIW attracted a lot of new people this weekend. So I agree with that. Uh, sorry, sorry, tangent there. No, definitely. Any rest of the, uh, want to? Oh wait, wait. This is me personally. If I want to get together for lunch. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, oh, I wish I read that before I talked. Okay, never mind. Ha! That's okay. I got coffee Thursday right. with her. Anyways, about this. Uh, no, no, I, I, I was very interested in you guys' opinions because I think AIW, uh, for the most part, is kind of what you think of when you think of like an indie promotion in the sense, like the style. Uh, I mean, they kind of go a bit more of a hardcore route, obviously. But, right. Um, uh, for the most part, it's that kind of style, you know, of wrestling, uh, you know. So I, I was, I, like I said, I was very interested to see what you guys thought, and I was glad that you really uh, uh, enjoyed the whole thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's um, I mean, it kind of epitomizes what you, like what you want out of it. Like you said, like this is like like Rick of Honor does, like fast paced, boom, 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 like action packed, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's okay, I think, for some some groups to like we're old school wrestling and, and we do things the old school, like fine if that's what attracts that areas like I think I think that kind of old school mentality works to bring people into a West News gymnasium. But um, I also think um, doing trying to be well, all right. I'm tired enough. I don't give a crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Trying to take an AIW and doing it out in the West Newton doesn't work. Those people yeah. don't respond to that. The people in the city of Cleveland are definitely responding to that, right? Um, and I think that makes a difference. I think that makes a huge difference. The people of Austin, Texas are coming out for Inspire Pro and appreciate this and appreciate the storytelling happening there. And the way you guys do storytelling, I could drop into an Inspire Pro wrestling next show and not be lost. Am I right? I, I think for the most part, yeah. I mean... Uh, I, I think we have stories, you know, obviously, but yeah, uh, a lot of it boils down to I think the wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, and and I, I agree completely. I think it's a case of knowing your audience. Right. Uh, you right. know, we work in you know we're in Austin, Texas. It's not uh, a city that's traditionally what you would consider like a southern city. Uh, so we don't really do a lot of things the way people would do in say San Antonio mm-hmm. or or further south. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's a much more modern kind of city. Uh, uh, you don't see a lot of like, uh, the, the kind of, that kind of style of wrestling, you know, in other parts of Texas, really, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit further North, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of, it, it, like you said, it's about knowing your audience and AIW, I think really knows their audience. They do, they do, and they cater to them for a bit, you know. So I, I think that's really good, um, because you guys, you guys step out, you guys step out and, and see what the fans are seeing a little bit, and see what's attracting them. So, mm-hmm. and and for them, it's a lot of like I, I pulled up uh, Kurt Hawkins, the former Kurt Hawkins Brian Myers match was the next thing against jo- Josh Prohibition, you know. Yes, which seeing... was for a uh, if, if that was the Kurt the Kurt Hawkins versus oh no Brian uh, I'm thinking a different match yeah a match with uh, Cliff Compton. Okay. Who, was, uh, who was Domino in WWE? Right, and right. They had right. a match over the SmackDown tag team titles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, what? Where, where, I believe Jay, where I believe Jake Clemens wore a blue referee shirt to fit with the theme. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, it, it's that kind of audience. I mean, like you know, what I mean, like it's that kind of sort of. It's good stuff. Uh, it's good style. stuff. Like I said, like really cool, really packed house. Really cool to see the energy there. Yeah, I just haven't seen that for a while. Uh, WWE house show, fun as a how WWE house show is going to be. Let's put it that way. I actually did a basic sorgonomics. I don't think I plugged this on the other show. I, maybe I did. I did a basic sorgonomics over at sorgatron.com uh, talking about social media and events because I was really impressed with how they did it there at the WWE live event, which has me yeah. thinking about what do we do at RWA and IWC. 
perhaps. Like maybe I come up with a question and put it on the big screen for the IWC court time shows, for instance. Or maybe, you know, we have a, a, a Bert say, hey, hashtag something something uh, and, and uh, at RWA Pro at the RWA shows and see if anybody actually tweets. You know what I mean? And maybe we read the tweet later or something if we don't have a screen. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, we kind of do a sort of uh, not 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 in that in a sense, but inspire. I know we do like a big emphasis on our hashtag, right? Like, to to hashtag hashtag about the show, and it really sparks up like tweets and and, and there's and nothing Instagram posts and stuff like and, that. And that's the easiest thing, just to be like, hey, tonight hashtag uh, RWA Unleashed, right? Hashtag uh, Super Indie. You know, I, is it, and I never yeah. and I never catch that. There's like, hey, go check out the website, but there's never a mind to. Um, hey, tweet about the show, you know, because that's mm-hmm. how this happens. Like, I, I look at how where v- v- five million clicks for for that vine that somebody took at ringside. Now, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, I've kind of battled well, with. Five, these. I would say that five million views a lot, and vine. You know, right, right, vines. I know you can watch yeah. it over and over again, but still, that is significant. That is not not mm-hmm. significant. And, and to do that and do little things like make sure you hashtag the show, and they didn't mention anything at AIW. I think it was just a very social media conscious crowd to begin with smart marks yeah. they're doing stuff i mean these guys are in the know and these guys are popular right and but there's that doesn't mean you can't build that you know and maybe you don't have a very social media crowd but even there's a couple people there uh, iwc is really good jesse's been live tweeting the event lately on iwc site um vow i don't think they can do that because i don't think there's any service down there so there's, <laughs> that's a problem uh but uh but but they should especially uh, how vow is not saying well chess flexor just went through a flaming table like that should be everywhere and it did afterwards and there was i know i know as soon as i got back in service i got messages from 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 my indie friends saying what happened with chess flexor you know uh right. so i mean at least in the mini circles that's happening but it could be happening on such a bigger scale when you have something insane like that happen that catches people's attention and i think vow is doing a lot of stuff to try to catch people's attention but i'm wondering if they're funneling into the right venues for that yeah i think aiw's particular is a really good group when it comes to um capitalizing on social media as well and and like i said this isn't the first time they've had stuff that's gone viral in Mm -hmm. a sense you know, I think there was the Buff Bagwell uh, Canadian Destroyer was exactly. one that like went exactly. really viral. And, and, and IWC is uh, no stranger to that either uh, with the uh, Tommy Dreamer leg, uh, t- uh, the bar thing. Uh, yeah. and, and, and also at superstars in Meadville where um, um, he, the one guy, uh, the, he brought the one, uh, uh, what's the name, special uh, kid came in and, uh, and and they got to do the DX thing and everything, you know? That went nice. everywhere. One of those went on TMZ, you know? Great exposure for the company. Now, what do you do to capitalize that? So, and that's the that's the next step that a lot of us and you guys and AIW are figuring that out. And I think AIW is ahead of a lot of people as far as this goes. So, that's my impression. Mm-hmm. I don't know the business side. I don't know what's going on on that side. Um, but, you know, uh, that's that's my impression. I think, uh, I think that a lot of people should be looking at this Absolution show um in general because it, it looks like it did a lot i mean granted it had the most insane collection of talent through favors uh uh loyalty whatever or they just have a really really cool bankroll up there at aiw uh <laughs> whatever that case may be they got a big thing and i think they're going to capitalize on it so uh, at least with name buzz and get people to the next show um Battle Sex is two. There you go. I see at least two, one, two TNA people in there already. So um, there you go. That's all I got to see on that. So uh, and and of course, the first step to not, you know, to having a good indie wrestling show is making sure you don't lose a former WWE superstar in the process. Right, Eamon? <laughs> well, I don't know if lose is a sense. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we do want to kind of mention that. I actually plugged this event uh, last week on the show, but uh, uh, Lone Star Championship Wrestling had their uh, uh, Bustin' for Autism event, a uh, charity event for uh, autism awareness. Uh, uh, for all I heard, very successful event nonetheless. Uh, but uh, as the stories kind of came out, of a uh, of a uh, missing Alberto Del Rio, who was on the uh, the front, uh, sort of he was in the main event. Uh, Lone Star Championship Wrestling and uh, uh, Club City Productions, who they were working with, uh, made a statement about it, basically saying that you know, for all intents and purposes, they they fully plan on Del Rio being there. They had last contacted Del Rio's camp like a day before, and everything was good. 
and then just he suddenly didn't show up and he suddenly went off the map pretty much uh which tend to work which started to worry a lot of people um yeah i mean we hear these stories a lot within the wrestling promotions i personally know the guys behind uh uh, lone star championship wrestling and they are nothing but dependable you know guys you know they, they, they know what they're doing and they're very um they're very reliable people, so I don't think this was a case of, you know, we're going to advertise a guy and, and you know, you know, not have him not show up or whatever. Um, you know, so I think that it was just a really unfortunate circumstance. This Today was the first we actually physically heard from Del Rio uh, because, like I said, he's been, he was off the grid pretty much, uh, and, and he apologized and, and, and um, uh, said he was reimbursing uh, uh, Clutch A Productions for the uh, – for missing the event. Uh, but yeah, very weird situation. And luckily it was a situation that I think was handled very well. Cause a lot of times those kind of situations can be handled very poorly. Uh, in at least some, from a social media perspective, uh, right. as far as like, uh, you know, trashing others or whatever. Uh, but from what I could tell it was handled very well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a really good, I, from what, all intents and purposes, what I heard, it was a really good event. It was still a really stacked event. Uh, the main event was uh, Lance Hoyt against Tommy Dreamer in a hardcore match, uh, which I hear was very good. There was also Joey Ryan, uh, Eva Lee of Lucha Underground fame. Uh, uh, many other great talents were there. So uh, definitely seems like a very successful uh, show for them nonetheless. Awesome. Awesome. Good Good to hear <laughs> that it worked out yeah. uh, in the long <laughs> Always run. Nice. Uh, it, 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 it's good when these stories have a happy ending. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, speaking of stories, we hope to have a happy ending. Uh, Five Star Wrestling's having a show this weekend. I'll be uh, there uh, doing actually the TV taping for them. I'm going to be assisting with that a little bit. Uh, they actually have Scott Hall, nice. uh, who who is going to be there. Everything's on the up and up. He was on uh, in rehab, and uh, these uh, you know he actually has a message. There's a mess a video message from Scott Hall himself talking about the show. Uh, that they have up on the site. Um, I know other friends of the show, uh, the Gambino brothers and Jimmy DeMarco. We've had, well, Jimmy's been on the show since we started this. And the Gambinos have been on our old show, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, so old time, old time, uh, know them in the business. So uh, really cool to see everybody reuniting one one more time. Uh, I don't know, ongoing with the, what the case may be. So uh, be good to see them here uh, on Saturday. Uh, and hopefully and the bad guy as well. So, uh, so that'll be up in, uh, I think it's East Brady, uh, PA here north of Pittsburgh. And, um, and there's also, I, okay, I, I mentioned it. I mean, I don't want to mention too much because these guys, you're not going to see these guys. Um, okay. You're going to see some of these guys cause they were featured in the wall street journal. I think we've talked about that friend of the show. Keith hot was part mm-hmm. of that. And also, uh, they were, they've been on KDK and, uh, and in the paper a few times here uh, in recent in, over the past year, uh, but they are the only indie wrestling in the city uh, in KSWA, and they're going to be three blocks from my house. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a uh, and I've seen them do these community events before, but it's going to be a free event. And it's going to be up uh, up there by the light by the train, and uh, uh, only a few blocks down from Slice on Broadway. I'm going to point that out. Damn. If you want to go check that out if you're in the city. Uh, so extra plug there. I'm going to go. I, I, I actually know a couple people. I think I know the referee. I think he's going to be refereeing for this one. I should do some stuff with him back in the day for comedy. And uh, and, uh, and and hopefully Keith Hott will be there as well. So it'll be kind of cool to check that out and see what everybody's up to. Um, and it's wrestling in my backyard. No matter how good or bad it is, it's wrestling. You know what I mean? So I got to go. Yeah. I got to go. And I don't have to drop. Uh, it, it's... That, that's very true. What you just said, uh, 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 good or bad wrestling, you, so you'll find something that uh-huh. I think you'll really enjoy, no matter where you go to. Uh, I think the next goal is to get debtors to a wrestling show like that, so she kind of <laughs> sees both sides. I'm really, I'm really pushing for her to see this because then she'll have seen all the sides. And actually, she wants to come to a VOW show as well. So uh, after yeah. we told her about how how Sunday's show went, uh, I think she's going to be all down for that. Uh, so there you go. Awesome. There's, there's actually I don't know I don't know if they're doing any other promotion, <laughs> but <laughs> I walk up because I I walk up to the train and I take it downtown and go have lunch with people, right? And we were actually on our way to WWE Saturday night, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's a KSWA flyer, and I'm like, what? They're having a beach view, and I'm reading it, reading it, reading it, reading it, and I'm looking and it says Broadway Avenue Farmers Market lot. Wait, they're having it right here in this parking lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there's just like, and also we're trying to figure out where the food cart is and and all this stuff. And I, I don't know, Beachview Brawler calling it, and uh, I, it's gonna be fun. I I I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll periscope it or something. I, I it starts at six o'clock on nice. Friday here our time, five o'clock for you, I guess. So look for some tweets for me. They will happen, for good or bad. They will. <laughs> 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 so I, and this is um um actually a pittsburgh legend a name some may have heard of is lord zoltan you know just like the pirates lord lord zoltan you know the z going on there I, i'm screwing up the z um but uh yeah it'll be interesting so uh kswa.org if you want to find any information on that i don't know last i knew the site didn't load for me so i don't know if that even works uh but there you go all right uh amen i think i got myself in one enough trouble for one night uh so <laughs> Nobody listens to this show. <laughs> Nobody listens to this show, except for that guy I ran into at Raw. Thank you for listening to the show. <laughs> There's a few people that listen to this show on my end, but I don't think that'll... I don't think you'll have a problem with that. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Uh, but uh, no, none of the promoters do. Eh, I can say whatever I want about them. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, no, please, please support all the wrestling. It's uh, it, it's great. It's varying degrees. Everybody's doing, everybody's doing a, a, a cool thing in their own way, uh, regardless, whether it be Inspire, whether it be uh, AIW, whether it be IWC, um, and everybody's trying to figure it out. You know, I mean, everybody wants to be the Ring of Honor, right? To yeah. a certain degree, and trying to grow that thing and have a place for these guys to be. You know, that aren't on WWE and and, and can do stuff. I mean, I mean, young bucks that are in the world. Wait, what? Leva Bates. Yeah, there's news about her blue pants. It's old blue pants is Rolling Stones. Yeah, I gotta see her. All the all these articles by the same guy. Do we have a wrestling fan in our midst at the Rolling Stone? I'll have to look it up. Well, I know Rolling Stone. I think in general, for the most part, has been pretty. I mean, in mainstream wrestling, I, I think in a sense, had they? But I, I mean, I think they are knowledgeable of it in, in that sense. But like, you know, I, I I'm very happy to see uh, Leva featured uh, uh, for her article, kind of uh, mostly talking about. Uh, it mentions independence as well, but also mainly her stuff on NXT is Blue Pants. And we had the Young Bucks article not too long ago uh, as well. Uh, yeah, it's very cool to see. Uh, uh, especially, I, I mean, I've worked with Leo a couple times uh, in Inspire Pro Wrestling, and she is uh, uh, really wonderful. And I'm really glad that she, you know, is getting cool. that opportunity to kind of, awesome. you know, sh- you know, get more people to know about her in a sense. Now we'll never be able to book her. She's yeah, rolling. now she's, she's rolling. yeah she's too big time now. She's big time. She's a Rolling Stones. So the Rolling Stones means we can't book her or Cole Cabana. I don't think Cole Cabana do our show anyways. <laughs> Would be weird for weird for a guy with his own podcast to do another podcast. Uh, but I don't know. Anyways, on that note, guys, wrestlingmamshow dot com. I don't have to tell you anything else. Go there, support the show, rate this show on Twitter. No, iTunes. Eh, talk about it on Twitter too if you can. And Eamon, he's at Eamon too, please. Go check out InspireProWrestling.com. Um, go check out uh, Sorgatron.com for me, SorgatronMedia.com, WrestlingManShow.com, uh, PittsburghWrestling.com, and all of our friends of PittsburghWrestling.com as well. Uh, support indie wrestling. Uh, either way, get, a- get AIW's Absolution DVD. Seriously, they deserve it after putting on the, that uh, show. The, the live edit is already on uh, SMVOD.com awesome. also. So. Awesome. If you're not a DVD person, that's a, that's a good way to watch it. As and well. that's right. I was there. I'm watching your setup. I'm taking notes. I'm taking <laughs> notes. Smart Mark. Stealing your stuff. No, no, it's not. It's not. I actually had a good conversation yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. iPay-per-views with another promoter this week. So, really <laughs> no, everybody's trying to figure it out. Nobody has a WWE budget, and how do I do it on X, right? Or negative X in most cases, you know. So, we'll see you guys next time. Support indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the four. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>